Sir Thomas More, you are arraigned before this commission on charges of high treason. How do you answer the charges? Let me begin by denying that I ever maliciously opposed the King's marriage to Anne Boleyn. I've never spoken maliciously against it. Only sometimes according to my mind, opinion, and my conscience. And I have suffered as a result. But you have maliciously denied the act of supremacy. No, I've been silent upon it. And for all my taciturnity, neither your law nor any law in the world is able justly and rightly to condemn me. Unless you may also lay to my charge either some word or some deed. Your silence can easily be construed as an action. But even in that case, the presumption that silence gives consent precludes the charge against me. Qui tacit consentiri videtur. What of the charge that you conspired in prison with Bishop Fisher, a convicted traitor? I never met him in prison. I only talked a little with his um, servant about familiar things and recommendations such as were seemly to our long acquaintance. We go back to your supposed silence on the act of supremacy. We think you have, in fact, spoken about it. And we have a witness. Call the Solicitor General. Call Mr. Richard Rich. Richard, you are under oath. Do you tell this commission truthfully what the accused said to you on this matter? Yes, sir. Yes. We agreed that Parliament might not make any such law that God was not God, to which Sir Thomas said, no more can Parliament make the King supreme head of the church. So he maliciously denied the King's authority in those words? Yes, sir. In those exact words. Then I will charge this commission to return a true verdict. I ask you, good sirs, to determine whether Sir Thomas More did converse with Sir Richard Rich in the manner alleged. You do so find him guilty. <laughs> then I will proceed in judgment against the prisoner. My lord. My lord, when I was a lawyer, the convention was to ask the prisoner before judgment was given why judgment should not be given against him. Hmm. What then are you able to say to the contrary? Thank you. To my view, this indictment is grounded upon an act of parliament directly repugnant to the laws of God and his holy church. The supreme governance of which no temporal prince may presume by any law to take unto himself. It belongs, it belongs by right to the see of Rome, to St. Peter and his successors, as our savior told us himself when he was here on earth. This realm, this realm being but one small part of the church, cannot make any particular law disagreeable to the general laws of Christ's universal Catholic Church. No more, no more can this realm of England refuse obedience to Rome than can a child refuse obedience to his own natural father. We now plainly see that you are maliciously bent. No, sirs, not maliciously! I hope we may all meet merrily in heaven hereafter. 
And I desire Almighty God to preserve and defend the King's Majesty and to send him good counsel. Sir Thomas More, you are to be drawn on a hurdle through the city of London to Tyburn, there to be hanged till you be half dead. After that, cut down alive, your bowels to be taken out of your body and burnt before you, your privy parts cut off, your head cut off, your body to be divided in four parts. 